Tampa, Florida, Adam Nasir. Let's give it up for Adam, guys. Come on now, come on. Have fun, buddy. My name is Adam Nasir, and this is how $5 changed my life. So uh, this is a story about two years ago. I used to live in St. Petersburg, Florida, and um, conveniently about 6 p.m. one night, I just went into a CVS to get some uh, water, just wanted to casually go home, and uh, there was a homeless person outside, and uh, he stopped me, and he asked me, hey, um, do you have any money? I said, okay, well, yeah, I've got some money, but what are you going to use it for? I always ask that. Um, and then... It was so long ago that it's so hard to remember the conversation, but I remember it was something where we talked for 10 or 15 minutes, and I didn't remember what. And then about 10 months later, I get an email. I'll read it out to you guys. This was sent to me on 126.18. Um, Good morning, Adam. It is finally upon me, the moment of my life where I have the opportunity to contact the one person that made such a profound impact on my life as it is today. I feel new, rejuvenated, and totally fresh. This is where you begin to wonder who I am and what this email is all about. Let me share uh, this with you. I am James Brown. You probably do not remember our first and only meeting. It was a bit plain and quite nondescript, but life-changing for me. You were at a CVS location in downtown St. Petersburg sitting in your car, and I was nearby standing and somewhat remote, but lost. You took the time to ask me about myself, to offer encouragement and a little conversation. You also gave me $5, and you knew I was destitute and probably hurting. That night was difficult for me, but your kindness gave me pause and belief in something other than what I faced each moment those days, my terrible existence, pitiful addiction, the dis and the disruptive behaviors that plagued my life. You, Adam, are a, are a remarkable man. Thank you for that, and it was the nicest thing that happened to me in many decades. Your words gave me hope, and at some point, I developed a renewed sense of purpose, perpetuated by the central belief that I could overcome any obstacle um, and becoming an asset and not a, li not a liability. He goes on, and he continues, I have held your card from the moment you gave it to me, and this was 10 months prior. I carried it everywhere I roamed, every ghetto, every jail, every rehab facility, every homeless shelter, and every church. I never forgot you, and I thought you, I would wait until I did a little work on myself before making an attempt to locate you and say thank you. And I have been sober now for five months. I, I seem to remember telling you I played chess and you asked me to show you the game one day. And um, while you were no doubt a busy person, he goes on to give me his contact info. And um, it, it continues and it, it, it ends there. I opened that email and uh, seeing something that special, I knew I had to reach out to this man. I gave him $5, but more importantly, I gave him my time. So um, we stayed in contact and um, weeks later we met up. I went to a Salvation Army facility in, uh, in Tampa. and. Uh, I'd met up with him, I took him out for lunch, bought him a sandwich, got to meet him in person, and he was as genuine as he sounded in his email. He told me he was looking for work, he had all these things going on, he was a phenomenal sales rep, absolute stud. I told him, okay, why don't you come in and interview for me? And he did. When I dropped him off that day, he was very nice, said thank you, didn't ask for anything, but he gave me $5 back. And he kept it. I don't think it was the same $5, though. <laughs> um, so the story goes on. And um, he ends up working for me. And uh, I hired him for my company. And I passed him off to a colleague. It was, it was a business that I transitioned. And I passed him off to a colleague. And he went from no money, homeless, stealing, broke. And now makes over $80,000 a year. Yeah. <laughs> So 
the story doesn't end there. I changed James' life. Broke nothing to having something and a career. And he's a good man. But really, he changed mine. I came to America with the American dream. Came here in 1996 from Morocco. My mom, and I was just a little kid. I was eight years old. And all I wanted to do was become successful and take care of my family. Um, I had an unbelievably horrible childhood that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. Stepdad, between the ages of 18, 8 to 18, that I lived with was unbelievably psychological toxic. And for at those formative years, it's, it's poison. But I'm a victor, not a victim. So what I'm trying to say is I developed unbelievable strength in that experience. And I use it for something positive. And I poured all that pain, all that energy, all that as an entrepreneur into my business, into myself, into my systems, my processes. Last three years, I don't go out. I don't, I don't BS. I'm at the office Saturday, Sunday, driven by the pain that I feel from that, that situation. I built an unbelievable business. But this experience with James really changed my life. I found that it's not about me anymore. I have unbelievable strength, and it's my purpose to share that with the world. Um, so um, now I am a full-time real estate investor, and I now coach um, intermediate and high-level uh, investors as well to pursue my passion of what I am and what I do. Um, but I found my ultimate life's purpose this year from a, a small conversation. And it's all about, for me, about giving and um, creating success. This year, as I told you, I had a bad uh, relationship with my stepfather. I carried a last name, and the last name is Jordan. And that was my last name for my adopted stepdad. This year, I made a huge decision. I changed, legally changed my last name. And you guys might be thinking, what the fuck? What kind of guy changes his last name? I changed it to Nasir. Nasir in Arabic means the eagle. It's my symbolic uh, animal. And it means one who creates success for others. And I changed that after that interaction with James. So really $5 changed my life. 